2,955? Yeah. And how many million are we going to do that by? Five. Five million. All right. Hey, folks, welcome, welcome, welcome out there. We are so glad you've tuned this afternoon. I'm Ernie Roberts. I'm your host for MathLine. And we're so glad you found us on PBS, nonetheless, right here. And also some of you are looking at us on YouTube and other things. So we're glad to have you with us this afternoon, this morning, whatever time zone you're in, all right? But thanks for tuning in. And you know what? We've got some great things going. Now, this is a specialized segment. Many times we have call-in shows. This is not a call-in show. This is one of those segments where we are going to take a topic. We're going to work on it. In fact, we're giving it a, a name called Test Prep. All right. You know, the idea is to type concepts or the type things you'll be tested on in so many different ways from state cast to SATs, ACTs, PSATs, all those good things. So that's what it's about today. So get your pencils, get your papers, maybe a calculator, and let's sit back, relax, and let's do some fun, fun math. Topic for the day, what do we got, guys? A blockbuster theorem. Wow. Must mean it's a big deal. And it is quite the big deal. The Blockbuster Theorem. Let's talk about it. You say, I've never heard of the Blockbuster Theorem. It's one of my pet names for this. Now, let me tell you why I call it that. Because it's probably one of the biggest theorems in geometry. Now, in my opinion, the biggest one is probably the Pythagorean Theorem. It's named after Pythagoras. It's pretty major. But this one, so much of your geometry hinges on it. And there's one little concept that hinges to make this theorem work. And by the way, Let's just look at this blockbuster theorem because some of you are going, I wonder what it is. What it is? Let's see what it is. It is also called the triangle sum theorem. Some of you go, oh, we know that. We know that. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. And notice I put all these lovely little triangles down here, and we've got acute. You say, well, Ernie, why did you call that acute? Because all three angles, all the three angles are acute angles in that triangle. It means they have measures of less than 90 degrees. And here we have a right triangle. Oh, remember that? Because it has a right angle in it. That was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? <laughs> so we have also the right triangle. By the way, this is an acute triangle. And notice here we have a right angle, but we have two acute angles. Notice there's always at least two acute angles in any triangle. Little point. Just, just a little bit there for you. Over here, we have what we call the obtuse triangle. Why? Because, well, there's, a, there's that, goodness, that's a big angle, isn't it? It's greater than 90 degrees, all right? So it would be considered as an obtuse triangle. The third angle, literally, is what happens here. Notice, in every triangle, there are at least, I said, two acute angles. It's all about what is going on with the third angle. And I want to tell you something. Sometimes when we try to draw triangles, we don't get them exactly the way we want them to look. But we will have one consistency. If we were to take all three of these angles, measure out with the protractor, or be given information about them, they would always add up to 180 degrees. That's what we call the triangle sum theorem. I call it blockbuster because it's so big. Because without 180 degrees in a triangle, you can't get to anything beyond that. You can't do your quadrilaterals. You can't do pentagons, hexagons, all the polygons. They're all hinging on this 180 degree number. And we're going to see, first of all, how does it work, all right? So, as we're looking at today's lesson, let's go ahead and see what we've got happening here. We're going to try to give you a map through. I don't know if we can put all the steps in here, because sometimes my paper gets a little bit cramped and crowded, all right? But here's the situation. Why? Why does this work? No matter what's obtuse, acute, right, equilaterals, isosceles, scalene, whew, I go all the way down the line. All the different types of triangles we name either by size, or by shape, we're always going to have this common thing of 180 degrees. All right, the measures will always add up to 180 degrees. And let's see where this comes from. Again, in proving this, sometimes we use two column proofs, sometimes we are allowed to make a paragraph type form out of it. We're going to see what we can do packing it in. Once again, I've got a little bit of cramped paper here today. But what we've got to do, you look at that and say, well, Ernie, there's no information hardly there. We have a, an angle, an angle, and an angle. And you know what? You someone say, well, just use the fact that there's 180 degrees in every triangle. That's what we're trying to prove, folks. So we can't say that proves the theorem. We have to go back and figure out little ways to create some things to happen in this thing 
to make that fly for us. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to invoke a friend of ours, and that is the O parallel postulate. And boy, I hope that we run this thing parallel. We're going to try. We're going to see that it flies here. Uh, if it's a little off, forgive me. Let's see. So you say, what'd you just do? I did pretty good. We're going to draw in a line that runs parallel. We'll call this line CD. Now notice it passes through the point C. It has to do that, otherwise this isn't going to help us any. But the parallel postulate is just as important almost as the blockbuster theorem here that I've been pushing with the triangle sum theorem, all right, the angle sum theorem here. We have now, look, 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 look what's going on. We have now created three angles, actually more than three angles at C. If you count the straight angle, we've got one. We've also got a rather big obtuse going this way and an obtuse going that way. Well, we've got three individual. So my goodness, if we count the straight angle, we've got six angles at C, and all of a sudden, I need to do a little adjusting right there because there are a lot of angles with the vertex of C. So I can't call anything really angle C anymore here. So let's put some numbers up here. We'll call it one, two, and three. That will work very nicely. So folks, angle two is now going to become our angle C. And I'm gonna put it right up there so we don't forget about it, all right? And we'll just kind of move out that little angle C for the moment. Actually, it's gone because I can't erase, right? So we are going to see now how do we get Angles one, two, and three, what do they do together? How do they work together? And eventually, we really want to find somewhere to get that 180 degrees. That's the whole point of what we're going to try to get the proof going with. Then, oh my goodness, how do we get A and B to mix into the mess, all right? And by the way, this would work if we wanted to do a right triangle. This would work if we wanted to do obtuse, equilateral, scaling. And obviously, this looks scalene. And it's almost like, yeah, it could be obtuse or maybe not, whatever. But you get the idea. This is what we do. We would do this for any triangle that we started with, all right? So I've chosen this one to go with. Let's work through this and see what happens. First things first, what are we given? Got it. A triangle. Nothing special. Nothing special about the triangle. Like I said, not isosceles, not acute, not obtuse, not right. We don't know that. It could be any of those. Uh, certainly not equilateral. And it certainly doesn't look isosceles, does it? But Again, that's where we start, right there. We just got any, any old triangle. But what we want to do, first thing we're going to do here is we are going to draw. And see, that's the important thing right here. We're going to create. We have to. There's nothing else to go with here. So we're going to create the ray or the line. I'm going to put a line there. We, we did a line, didn't we? We sure did. Line CD. Now, that means it's got to pass through C. It's going to pick up D. But one thing very important. It's running parallel. Folks, if it doesn't run parallel, this whole thing is, is messed up. Not going to happen, all right? And by the way, we call that our good old friend, the parallel postulate. I'm just going to map a little bit here, all right? But that's where it starts. Postulate. Let's see if I can spell this right. Yep, there we go. That's an L. All right, so the parallel postulate working for us here. Now, after we've done that, let's take a look at these angles. First of all, if I were to look at angle 1 and angle ACD, so you say, okay, that's just two angles there. And you got angle 1 and the big obtuse angle, that ACD right there, that's composed of 2 and 3, hint, hint. I can say those are basically a linear pair. Now you say, well, there's three angles. Exactly, there's three small angles. So we're going to look at 1, and we're going to look at this big clump right over there. There is linear pairs, which we know are supplementary. So think about that, and then we're going to do a little angle addition here. Oh, my goodness. And we're going to say two and three. Huh, wow. So a lot of things going on, aren't there? So let's go ahead and say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle ACD is going to give us 180 degrees. That's important. Now, we probably want to go ahead and say that we're supplementary first for some of you purists out there who love to prove things and so every little step. Like I said, we're going to be packed in here. But I'm going to go back to the fact that we are going to use uh, linear pairs or supplementary. And I got enough room. Oh, yeah, plenty of room out here. Supplementary, which means, yes, they add up to 180 degrees. So, folks, there's our 180 right there. Now, you say, well, any angle one doesn't have anything to do with the triangle, does it? No, but it's going to be helpful, so don't forget that. Don't forget that. 
All right, now from here, we're going to break down this ACD into two small angles. That's two and three. So we're going to do that. We're going to use what we call angle addition and substitution. I'm going to put these two steps, kind of combine them. And we're going to have angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of that angle three, adding up to 180 degrees. And again, I'm using a double. I'm really combining two steps in here. I know, bad, bad, bad. Sometimes that is bad, but we're going to work with it here. We're using angle addition because we're breaking two small angles, bringing them together to form the big angle, ACD. All right, that's where we took out. Say goodbye to that. We'll put this in now. Okay, put it in its place. And I'm going to also go ahead and put that we have a substitution. Geometry is so loaded with substitutions or transitives. This is substitution because we're basically picking something up, putting something else right down in its place. There you go. Everybody good on that? So far, so good. And what's going on? Oh, we got angle two where we want it. So we're taken care of right there. We've got angle C or angle two, the one we started with, right? So let's see, how are we going to get A and B into this lovely problem? You know, we probably could have made all those other steps up, but that's all right. We're going to move on here. Since I, at this point, need to figure out how to get A into the problem and how to get B in the problem, I've got to go back to this little parallel moment. All right, we've got the parallel postulate working here. Folks, if these lines are parallel, what can I say about angle one and angle A? Look at that picture. Tell me something. Look at that. They look like they're congruent. They are. And notice I cut that Z pattern. That's because they are alternate interior angles. And with the parallel lines, they're going to be congruent. So here's where things start to happen. We're going to say that angle one is congruent to angle A down there. All right? That's our step right there. Angle one congruent means they have the same measurement, have the same number of degrees. And on the other side of that picture, how about it? Angle three? My goodness, angle three and angle B. So let's go with another one here. The measure of angle three is equal to the measure of B. Well, why don't we just make that congruent like I did the other one? All right, that sounds good to me. Put a little congruence in our lives there. And why do we know that? Because we know if we have parallel lines, they're going to yield a pair of alternate interior angles to be congruent. Now, I really, I, I know we abbreviate so many times. I see so many times we go to write alternate interior angles congruent. They are not congruent unless we have parallels, all right? So really, really going to be a stickler on this, that we have to say we have parallel lines, then, then we can get our pair of alternate interior angles. Now, notice we said 1 and A are congruent. We said 3 and B are congruent. We're not saying all four of those are the same measure, my friends. No, no, no. We're saying these over here are going to work. I'll put a little tick on those. And these two on this side are going to work in their own right. Okay, so we'll put two ticks on that. But what I'm noticing here is, all of a sudden, we are now getting to where we want to go here. We're getting back to this angle two involved. Now we can put A and B, that's what we're about, right? We got 180 where we want it. We got angle two where we want it. Let's do one more substitution. Bang, bang, here we go. Uh, step five, and I think they're going to probably have to drop out the bottom. We already have dropped out the bottom. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we're going to say goodbye to angle one, and we're going to put in what measure? What matches up with it? Measure A. So here we go. Measure A goes in. Keep angle two. We went ahead and kind of fudged on that in our, what we're trying to prove up there. And now we're going to have one more going here. How about it? Angle B goes into the place of our angle three there. And, you know, we got that for a reason, again, substitution. And, you know, for those of you who are purists, I keep using that word. You say, what is that talking about, Ernie? You can move the A and the B. That's a commutative property moment. Ryan Coggins would love me on that. And, you know what? It means the same thing here. So we're going to let this go. This shows us that, yes, there are 180 degrees in each triangle. And it is very important that we understand that. Now, I know so many of you say, well, I learned that in third or fourth grade. They told me it was 180 degrees. Well, you weren't ready to prove it. But now it's nice to know why that works. We accept a lot of things out there that really we need to know where they come from.
And I think that's an important one there. So anyway, there's your quick proof of 180 degrees in a triangle. I hope it was a quick proof. I will find out here in a little bit to see how our time is working. And let's look at some samples because, as I said, this is about test prep. Now we want to look at some problems where things will come in handy for you. So here we go. We're going to look for the solve for x and y in this figure. Now notice I've done a few little things. I threw a right triangle in here, and it looks like I threw in a 40 and 80 degrees there. And you're saying, wow, Ernie, you don't have any, well, I do have something. I have a 90 degree angle, right? That's important. But we're going to need some help from this triangle to get us over to this one. Typical type ACT question or an SAT type question. And a lot of times, the end of course type question, all right? So you take your state test. So let's take a look at this thing and figure out what we're going to do. First of all, Blockbuster. Yeah, bring Blockbuster back. The triangle sum theorem here. And we do have the angle sum theorem here. We've got 180 degrees, right? We have used up, count them, 120. A little mental math goes a long way on these problems, doesn't it? Especially when there's zeros on the end. We can handle that. So we've got 120 degrees. Ooh, out of 180. Go to your calculator if you need to. 180 minus that 120. That's going to give us 60 degrees. All right. Now, hey, hey, 180 degrees, right? But this little guy over here has to have 180 degrees also. Different shape, but still got to make 180 degrees. And I'm going to tell you something about this. X connects to this 60 by being vertical angles. So guess what? These two little guys are going to be the same also. So there's 60 degrees. Whew. All right. Now it's beginning to kick, isn't it? We've got 60. We've got 90. That makes 150. Some of you are saying, well, Ernie, could we just knock the 90 off to begin with? If you're doing that, you're on the right track. But I'm going to go with a lot of us because a lot of us are thinking, oh, we're using Blockbuster, yeah, or the 180 degrees in a triangle. We have 60, we have 90, it's 150. Subtract that off, it looks like we're going to have 30 degrees for Y. So your X value here was 60, and your Y value looks to be 30. And, you know, most of the time when you're looking at these math problems on an end of course test or an ACT, SAT type thing, You've got enough problems there. You've got to move pretty quickly. So, folks, that mental math comes in handy, all right? You're not going to try to make real complex numbers. You can go to your calculator, but when you got these zeros, use them and run, all right? makes it a lot easier. So there you go. Nice, quick, sweet example there for, put there 180 degrees in a triangle, all right? Let's keep some more practice going here. Let's take a look at our next problem here. Got a little different twist to it. Eh, not too bad. We have a triangle with one angle of 70 degrees. Just to help us out, I marked it. It's at the top. But here's the key thing. The other two angles are congruent. That means their measures are the same, right? Everybody understand? Again, little tidbits of information that help. Congruent. Because if you don't have, you don't know but one angle, something's got to tip you off. Like uh, the other time we had a right, right? We had a right angle, correct? This time we've got, hmm, we've got congruence, which means same measurements here and here. And we also know, we also know there's 180 degrees. You got it in every triangle. So what are we going to do? We're going to take 180. Oh, we're going to put it right there. Yep. We're going to subtract that 70. All right. And then you know what we're going to do? We're going to take that result and divide by 2. And that's going to give us the measurements of those two angles. It's arithmetic, isn't it? Basically, it is. You understand the process and you go through it. Now, someone said, well, my teacher told me we need to make an algebra equation. That's fine. But when you're taking an ACT or an SAT, sometimes it's good to have some intuition. That's the good word, isn't it? You know that you're going to subtract that from 180, gives you 110, and divides by 2. Now, those of you who want to go to calculator, that's fine. You're basically taking half 110. You know 100, half of 100 is 50, half of 120 is 60. We're right in the middle. So that's going to be 55. And those are going to be your 55 degrees for each of these. All right? So again, pay attention to your problem. Read it through. Usually there's going to be enough information that's going to lead you, if you understand the process, and if you know there's 180 degrees, and you know what congruent means, going to lead you there immediately, and you'll be done in less than a minute when you figure out that answer. So again, test prep, a lot of it is all about the timing, all about the timing. So let's take a look at some more here. We're going to keep working through. Uh, ratio. Let's take a look at this ratio problem here. 
says the angle measures of a triangle are in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. Now that doesn't mean they're 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 4 degrees. That means they're going to be, we take this 2, 3, 4, it's an extended ratio, but you're talking about the three angles, all right? Now, I'm not really sure which of these, in my eyesight gets kind of crazy, and it really is not important. But in this case, one of these is going to be the smaller, one of these is going to be the middle, and one's going to be large. This looks like it might be the smallest over here. This one may go in the middle, that goes a large one. I'm, I'm really not sure. We'll, we'll run it that way. How about it? But what we are saying is that these three angles add up to, you got it, blockbuster. Triangle sum angle theorem says 180 degrees. Exactly. So, ah. If it's ratios, that means we need to take each of those and we need to multiply them by the same number. You say, well, what number is that, Ernie? We don't know, do we? But if we'll, look, we'll take out the bottom there for a little bit, guys. There you go, thank you. But what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to add these together and we're going to get 180 degrees. Beautiful. In fact, in fact, when you look at these numbers, they really are nice because we're going to have 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is going to give you 9. Oh, yes. And we got 9x equaling to 180 degrees. Divide both sides by your 9 there. Again, mental math. You can divide 9 into 18 very easily and tell us a 0 in. We got x equaling to 20. And some of you are going, like, oh, there's the answer. No, the answer is find the measures of each angle. Woo. And it may ask you, find the measure of the smallest, the middle size, the largest. Read carefully. This one, I'm just giving you all of them because we're going to look and see how easy this problem actually is. So we're going to go back and we're going to say, hmm, how about it? We'll let that one be 2x. This one would be, how about it, 3x. Really hard to tell. And we'll put this one up here at the top. We'll say it's 4x. Now, putting 20 in for each of them, remember those mean two times, three times, and four times. So what are we going to have out of this one is going to be, looks like, 40 degrees. It looks like this one is up here going to be 80 degrees. And this one over here, oh, we'll go with 60 degrees. All right, that's in here, that's in here, and of course we got that one going there. All right, so quick, quick check. How about it? 40 and 60, 100 plus 80, 180 degrees. Life is good. Those are your angles. Always read carefully. They may ask you for the largest or the smallest. You got to think it through. Got to think it through on one like that. So here we go. A little practice on the blockbuster. Notice I like algebra. I do like algebra. Some of you are going like, but if you can do arithmetic, even better. All right. But let's take a look at one where you are going to need to do algebra. And notice I didn't put a triangle for you here. All right. But it looks like since these two, ah, those two are the same, so that means we have two angles that have the same measurement, and then we've got another little guy that has a, a different odd out, so to speak. This will be an isosceles triangle, all right? So let's do a quick run on this. We know the story. If they're representing, these are representing our number of degrees and the three angles. So let's put it out here. Let's add them together. 2x plus 2 plus 3x plus 1 plus 2x plus 2, and we're going to come up with 180 degrees. All right. Now, if you can do that without looking at a picture, more power to you. All right. If they ask you something like, well, what kind of triangle is it? And they may do that and not even make you have to find out what X is. In this case, you know it's isosceles because those two are, yeah, they are different. They're the same. And this one is different. All right. They are the same. Uh, 2X plus 2 and 2X plus 2. Now, let's piece it all together. Everybody good? Everybody out there with me? Let's see what happens. I have. 2x, 3x, and 2x, which is going to give me, I think, 7x. Last time I checked, it should. We've got a plus 5 going on here. You said, Ernie, where'd you get 5? I got 2, 1, and 2, like terms. Time to get those like terms together. This is quick algebra. Yeah, you don't need a calculator to add 2 plus 1 plus 2, right? No, don't do that. Now, we equal to 180 degrees. It's lovely. What are we going to do with this plus 5? We're going to subtract it. We're going to subtract it off, and that's going to give me 7x. On the other side, I have how much? 100 and, here it is, 75. Now, 
I'm not going to guarantee the problems are ever going to come out this quick and easy. You say, well, that looks like a nasty division. Well, that's what you've got a calculator for. But also, if you're really quick and astute and have spent money any time, you'll notice that's, that's like seven quarters. And if you divide seven into that value, you're going to get x equals 25. Now, it's time to figure out how much you have in each angle. Let's go for it. Two times 25 is like two quarters plus two. Oh my goodness, that was easy. How about it? 52. All right, there's your degrees. Ah, we have another one that's that same amount, isn't it? So we'll go ahead and do it right there. It's not going to change. Equals 52. Last option. How about it? 3 times 25. Add 1. I'm seeing. What are you seeing? We're all seeing. 75 plus 1. 76. Ha ha. All adding up. 180 degrees. So there's a little bit of some examples in our good old specialized segments test prep for you today. Blockbuster, the triangle sum theorem, all sorts of great things, 180 degrees in a triangle. Hope you've enjoyed your lesson with us today and we will look for you again next time.